Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be milling up these cedar logs, uh, my homemade bandsaw mill, and uh, I'll show you a few upgrades I've done so far also. Some bearing guides rather than plastic block guides and a few other things, so uh, stick around. Just got done uh, bringing another load of cedar back from my neighbor Matt's place. He was actually the neighbor that gave me the motor for my mill when I was planning on building it. And um, anyways, he needs some planking for some flooring on a structure he's going to build. So I'm going to cut his stuff into one and a half inch thick planking, and I'm going to cut siding for some of the stuff I need. So uh, it's evening time and the spring is starting to rain, so we'll get started on milling this tomorrow, and I'll show you a little more how my mill works. So I'm in the process right now of just putting a new uh, bandsaw blade on my mill. The last uh, bit of wood I milled for a neighbor was old growth, but it had a lot of rocks and stuff stuck in it, so it ended up doing the blade. Even if I cleaned it up pretty well, there's still stuff hidden in it. But anyways, uh, pretty much what you do is you just air down both tires and just roll the blade off, take the old one off, and you put the new one on, just kind of roll it and work it on. And then once you get it on, I air them up to about 45 to 50 PSI, and that tensions it. And you're good to go from there. One other thing I've done since I first built the mill was uh, I had plastic guide blocks that were adjustable and you'd have to adjust them maybe once or twice a day when you're running the mill. And since then I put uh, roller bearings on here and uh, it seems to work really well. It doesn't go out of adjustment ever and uh, the bearings are super cheap to put on there. So I'll give a little close up of that next here. And... So here's the upgraded bearing guides. This 6000 bearing right back here has always been here. It's got about a 10 millimeter inside diameter and that's what I hold it in with an Allen bolt up here. But I used to have UHMW plastic blocks that sat on top and bottom here, and you have to adjust them throughout the day a few times. And uh, so I've upgraded to ball bearings. They're actually, I can't remember the number of them, but they're actually from uh, skateboard wheels. And uh, they work a lot better. The mill's a little bit louder now here and the, all the ball bearings spinning, but other than that, it cuts a lot nicer. Believe it or not, I actually get uh, free carbide blades from my work. They're used. But uh, I work at a snowboard manufacturer, and um, as soon as the blades on this big bandsaw mill there maybe get a bent tooth or anything like that and start leaving a little striping on the surface of the wood, they pull them, put them on the wall, and then I can have them for free. And my friend Michael actually cuts them down for me, and uh, does a great job with that. And um, they're used, but they're still cut great. And uh, it's nice to have a free source of blades, especially carbide, because the cost is so much more for these. And uh, So I haven't really had to really buy any blades yet for my mill. And uh, it's a nice source for reusing material as well. So here's my can't stop here. It's got a kind of a 45 angle, so you drop it in here, you bring the log up to it, and if you want to roll it over, 
the bark doesn't cut into here and chip up and just get stuck on it, hangs up. You can just slide past it freely. But I've also made this for, if you got a log with a lot of knots in it or a lot of taper to it. These I made, they go on here, tighten them down, drop them in, bring the log up to it and lock it down. And that's for the first few passes if you're trying to take a log that's irregular shape. So my bearing guides won't touch like the high points in the log or the major taper. Just holds it off and centered in the middle a little more for the first two passes until you can start making a cant. Works pretty well. So here's my uh, log lockdowns. They're uh, made out of old pipe clamps. Put on a new piece of uh, pipe in here. You can just unlock it, move it around where you want it. This is how you lock it down to the log. So it's nestable tubing so you can raise it up and down to fit whatever direction you want to go and, and height. There you go. So when I get down to these lower sections of the board, I use these low profile stops I made. They go right on here, tap them in place, and then lock them down. Then you can come right over it with the blade. I think they sit up about half inch to three quarters of an inch, but you can come right over it with the blade and have clearance. So I'm done for the day. This is a project for tomorrow. This should be about a 13 by 13 inch cedar cant. I mainly will just be cutting into uh, boards for siding. And um, got a little keeper pile over here for myself and I got a truckload of stuff I'm going to take my buddy Matt. I'll show you that stuff next. So here's a stack of siding I'm going to keep for myself. And Here's a truckload of stuff I'm taking back to my neighbor Matt's place. He wanted a lot of the off cuts and uh, wane boards too. I think he's got a little project to do with those as well. And a lot of it's 10 foot. There's some 8 foot stuff in there too. 